uh, just the first you? name. Uh, Colby. Like, See, I'm from Buffalo. I'm like from the, like the Midwest. I said Kelby for quite some time. Kelby? Kelby. No, that's not right at all. Well, then he let me know. Well, good. <laughs> Great. Kelby. Uh, he hosts a show. <laughs> he hosts a show called Young Persons Radio. Uh, he used to host a show with me, and then he stopped after I kicked him off. <laughs> um, he hosts another show called Knapsack, right, Kelby? Yeah. Kelby? <laughs> Yeah, that's the one. Count. That's the one. Knapsack at... It's at Crystal Lake. You guys all heard that. <laughs> I feel like it's brave to have the name Nap in your show. Mm -hmm. I like that. Like a nap, like a book bag. Yeah. That would be so <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I got it right away. Yeah. Over James's head right Over here. my head. Um, <laughs> you guys like book bags? We're still talking to you. Sorry. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Put your hands together. Get a slow clap. Get a slow clap. Who and do don't it? speed up. Okay, so what's happening? <laughs> Get a lot of white people in the crowd. Let's all clap together. Slow clap, don't Ready? speed it up. Okay, just yeah. Well all right. done, okay. slow all clap, clap it up. Let's <laughs> comedian Cole B. going for James and Julian giving us a master class in hosting everybody. Uh, I'd like to start off with a quick impression. This is every action hero taking a shower. <laughs> I can't wash the blood off. <laughs> See, because of his sins, he can never really be clean. Uh, I love action movies. I, I've been playing a lot of violent video games also, uh, but I can never quite get into them because uh, they like bend over backwards to make these games like as immersive as possible, but the very fact that it is a video game just like breaks the reality immediately. Like I've been playing a lot of Red Dead Redemption and uh, the first thing that happens when you play Red Dead Redemption for the first time is there's a grizzled old cowboy character just going like, all right, partner, bad news. We left John back in the middle of that trail. If we don't find him by nightfall, he's liable to catch cold and die. We're gonna have to go out and find him. Grab your rifle. And by the way, it's R1 to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and if you should find yourself alone out there, we get separated, you don't have a friend to turn to and no direction to find your way home, just remember. You can press option to look at the map. It's <laughs> like, so I can't get in. <laughs> Reality is broken. I'm very lucky. I get to talk a lot about video games at work. I work at an after-school program, huh? For elementary school kids. If you're not familiar, uh, it's a program for kids who love board games but hate having all the pieces. <laughs> they are chronically missing. Uh, <laughs> I have been surprised over the course of working this job at like how quickly some of the kids can like form very intense emotional connections to you. Like there's a five-year-old girl who I pick up from school and uh, she came up to me the other day and said, I have seven friends. Would you like to hear their names? And I was like, of course, I would love to hear their names. Please go on. And she goes, well, there's Ari, and Augie, and Madeline, and Brody, and Ilan, and Felix, and you. <laughs> I was like, aw. Bitch, you got six friends. <laughs> <laughs> Clocking out here soon, and uh, <laughs> we'll all stop pretending here. <laughs> Most of the kids are cool, they pretty much just like do their own thing and you're just kind of there to facilitate, but some of them will say fucked up shit to you and judge you in ways that I find mean. <laughs> a different five-year-old once asked me, just like came up to me across the room and went, hey Colby, do you have a wife? <laughs> and I was like, uh, uh, no, no, uh, uh, I actually uh, uh, don't. And he goes, any children? <laughs> Like, what are you, my mom all of a sudden? <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 uh, no, no children, uh, uh, none of my own. And he goes, so you are a stranger to most people. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a gut punch. <laughs> like I felt myself get physically sick. I'm like stammering, I didn't know what to say. I like gave him some half answer. I was like, well, you know, I like to think I have friends, but he had already walked away. He was just like, you been got, bitch, and just like went about his day. 
after ruining mine. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's very fun. It's a very fun uh, time to hang with the kids. Uh, anyone else in therapy? Who's in therapy out <laughs> there? Yeah, cool. I, uh, uh, my therapist told me recently that I have a bad habit of trying to win over people who don't love me. <laughs> but what she doesn't get is I'm trying to make those people realize how much they love me already, okay? <laughs> I thought I'd try it. <laughs> I, I guess it's just because I've been in therapy for so long, but like for, with her, it's like even the most mundane question will cause me to like reflect, you know, in a way that I'm not expecting. She'll just be like, uh, so what are you up to today? And I'll just be like, well, you know, just falling into the same unhealthy patterns of behavior just because they're familiar. <laughs> She's like, how's your girlfriend? I'm like, well, she'll never be my mom, so. <laughs> you take it from here, Jackie. <laughs> very fun. Uh, uh, folks, who out there loves gossip? Huh? Yeah. I love gossip too. I do have a friend who is impossible to gossip with because he seems to have no idea what gossip is. He is a co-worker. We were at a happy hour and I posed a perfectly normal question to the group which is, hey, anybody got any gossip? <laughs> and he goes, oh, I got something. And I was like, here we go. <laughs> Give us the goods, John. And he goes, my grandpa is starting to forget stuff. <laughs> Just really having a hard time. And I was like, you know, John, what I really wanted was, you'll never guess who's hooking up at work, not whatever depressing shit you've got going on in your life. And he was like, uh, he was like, oh, so you want like, you want like sex stuff? And I was like, yeah, sure, like that counts. Let's. And he, uh, do you have anything? And he goes, oh, I got a big one. And I was like, okay, John, now's your chance. Hit us with it. He goes, I just got back from the doctor. Oh. Says I have genital warts. <laughs> like, I give up, John. We do not gossip together anymore, John. <laughs> the guy named John in the lab back there. <laughs> Uh, uh, we work with kids, it's very fun. So do you guys, uh, this is not at all related to what I was saying. Who likes sexting uh, out there? <laughs> you guys like sexting? Woo, if you, okay, okay, here we go. I thought I liked it until uh, the parents of one of the kids who goes to the after school program sexted me uh, by accident, folks. <laughs> I text this guy at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday because his son has not yet appeared at the pickup area, just making sure Ryan is coming. And when I get back two text messages, the first one says, yep, he's probably just running late, he'll see you there soon. The second one says, let's move from fantasy to reality. <laughs> I share an office with a glass door and sit across from my boss. Office sex is never an option, lol. Not too bad. <laughs> Pretty embarrassing, right? So I see the three dots, you know, coming up on the other side. So now I think, well, he's realized what he's done, of course. He's going to be uh, self-effacing, apologize, so embarrassed, and I'm just gonna be, oh, so understanding when I give him my reply. And instead, when I get back, and it is so graphic, uh, here are my barriers, Colin. It's, this, is, this is tough. I use barriers when giving head on flesh, uh, on flesh, excuse me, uh, <laughs> or getting fucked. Hands are fine without gloves as long as they're washed or haven't done mingling in other juices. <laughs> this is so long. <laughs> So, I am stunned, <laughs> time goes by, and I realize I text this man every day. He is going to find out eventually, sooner or later, probably tomorrow, what he has done. I must acknowledge it now. So I decide to write back, hey, don't think this was for me, <laughs> but don't worry about it, uh, no problem, uh, you know, it's forgotten. And he writes back, I swear to God, well, there's no coming back from this one. <laughs> and just full stop, doesn't say anything else, which kind of makes me think he's a good dad. 
When he was faced with a mistake he made, he didn't lie or try to weasel his way out of it. He looked it square in the eye and accepted his fate. And for that reason, Ryan's dad who's fucking all the time is my hero, okay? I'm Colby Smith, everybody. Thanks. Yeah.